and we are, we're working already. One minute early and I get to open the Katie's arms. So welcome one, welcome all, come on in. Come on in to the pub that is your pub, uh, the Katie's arms. <laughs> Everybody is welcome. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you think, it doesn't matter what you believe, it doesn't matter um, if you're a lover or a hater particularly, but you just can't be unkind to anybody else in the family here. Hello, what am I doing this weekend? This weekend I'm going to see my mum. I've already given her her card and she has her present. Mumsy's on the wall. And mum's now really started watching Katie's Arms. I have to try not to think about that, otherwise I might moderate what I say. <laughs> I tell her not to, but she can't help herself. Hello from Alabama, oh please, I love Alabama gentlemen. Um, from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina is here. Go and grab your wine, absolutely. Who's come to the pub without their wine? Go, come on, you all have permission to go. Raid the fridge, look in the back of the cupboard. If there's nothing there, just grab something shit that you would never drink. Go and get yourself a drink. Um, and thank you all for joining, you were all terrific. <laughs> Um, and this, as you'll know, if you're a regular or if you're new, welcome, welcome, is our weekly gathering of people who frankly couldn't give a shit anymore. Oregon, hello, you're here. And Kent is here. Lithuania? Do we have Lithuania? It's basically like Eurovision, but without the shit and nauseating commentary provided by people who should know better. You have Prosecco. And New South Wales, hello. Um, you're putting your customers on hold so you can join the pub. Very sensible. Just tell everyone to wait. It's half an hour and it's our little moment to just escape the world. We leave the worries at the door. We sit in our gym jams, hopefully. Anybody here in their gym jams? Hello from good morning, Sydney. Good morning, rest of world. We sit in our gym jams or dressed, maybe. Edge of the Lake District is here. Scotland. I don't know what that was. Scotland. And we forget everyone else and we allow ourselves to laugh, mostly at me and my failings or issues, but also at many other things. And the idea is that it's supposed to be fun. You're also on the wine, great. And it's also about me encouraging very bad behaviour. So at no point will you hear me say something awful like, stay safe. You will never hear me say something like, be careful or go well. You won't ever hear me say drink carefully or, you know, drink with caution or drink in moderation because I think we're past that and we were past that a very long Mexico, Mexico, a la James English. I don't know if you are, see the problem is we have some inside jokes now but basically, when I was doing my podcast with James English, I used the word Mexico and he didn't seem to understand it. And I was fearful he didn't know what Mexico was. <laughs> but he's actually not as thick as I thought. <laughs> Shall we start off? But how is Alex Belfield? Yes, look, I even have notes today. Very proud. Um, Belfield, I will update you. I spoke to Alex yesterday. So I will give you the Belfield uh, lowdown. And sort of on that topic, and yet unrelated completely, Jeremy Vine. I'm just going to say, without wishing to, you know, be found guilty of online stalking, because, uh, you know, we, we wouldn't want to be messing with someone that reported people for online stalking when they're clearly taking the piss. But how? Please tell me, someone, someone tell me, how... Does Jeremy Vine still have a show on Radio 2? As soon as it comes on, and remember when I used to be on that show all the time, in the good days, as soon as I hear the voice, I just think, oh, piss off. Or my husband will say, oh, and we turn it off. Is this not, is this not everybody? Do you not hear Jeremy Vine? This is, this is said in a non-stalking manner. Hmm? But do you not hear that voice and just think, oh, shut up, turn off, right? Or push off. So how, when they've got rid of all of the really good people, you know, Ken Bruce, like my dad likes, and Vanessa, who's like a troopiest, troopier, troopy woman who works so hard, 
and all of the decent funny people. How is that? I don't want to use the phrase turd, but how is that turd still got a job? And when I'm out and about on the road and I just, if there's a reason and his, his name comes up, everyone's like, Wanker. So I don't get it. I don't get it. I can only believe, truly, that he knows something. And he's kept on because he knows where the bad bodies are held. And the sort of by sadness, and let's bear in mind, this is said in the spirit of comedy and light relief. He keeps being nearly hit on his bike, doesn't he? Paul O'Grady. Oh, I love that man. Mm. Drink, drink, drink. Mm. Paul O'Grady, I love. Jeremy Vine. <laughs> Don't know what that was. I was sort of going into Joey Deacon and then I tried to retract it. Jeremy Vine. It, it just keeps nearly being hit, doesn't he? Out in a penny farthing, nearly being hit or on a bike with his bloody cameras on everywhere on his tiny end of his tiny little bit camp videoing in case he nearly might be hit by someone. I think cyclists in London in a general way, or a pain in the ass. And I think it's no wonder more of them nearly get hit because they think they own the bloody road and they've been emboldened by small pricks like the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, who we know is nipple height. And that's a height we know I don't agree with. We call them warning shots, exactly. Katie Hopkins is strange but sexy. <laughs> I am not strange at all. Most people aren't used to people like me, though, that just, you know, go forth with all of my embarrassing things. In fact, I've got more of those to show you <laughs> involving this. But um, yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, Jeremy Vine, if you could stop nearly hitting him, you know, if you're going to do a job, do it properly. Um, so lovely Mark has been making, oh, we have exciting news. Oh, Katie, mum is watching. Oh, we forgot to take mumsy down. Hold on. I'm going to go over there in my Trump slippers. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. We've got mumsy down. There. She won't be able to hear. I put her that way up. <laughs> Love her soul. Um... Yes, I've got exciting, exciting news for you. That was me tapping you on the head with the exciting news that is coming in a minute. I'm going to be like those people on TV when they drag out an announcement. Ah. <sighs> Lovely Mark made these, <laughs> right? So these are flyers and I'll be on the streets handing them out and I'll be sending them. Maybe you can hand some out for me. We can send you some. These ones are for Blackpool. So I will be on the end of the pier soon handing these out, mostly for the funsies. There's bloody massive ones of these as well, like pull up banners where my face is literally the size of Luton, which means my nose is like twice the size of Luton. Terrifying. But what lovely Mark's done, can you see? There's some things missing. Right, so here, right, <gasps> Liverpool, I'm coming. The Wirral. Yes, we just got, we just got, is it the Wirral? Am I in the Wirral? Am I on the Wirral? Am I going up the, do I, do I go up the Wirral? Someone help me. What happens, do you go in the Wirral? In the Wirral? Do I perform at the Wirral? I don't know. Right, see this, this is a mole here, right? Where is it here? It's gone. <laughs> right? Yes, Liverpool. Yes. And then here, you see these teeth? That's where I landed on my face when I had a massive, massive seizure uh, in London, crossing a road. And there was blood everywhere. I cut half my tongue off. My arms were dislocated. Uh, it was a nightmare. Anyway, I kind of shoved these teeth in the wrong direction and bit through my lip here and here. What do you notice about these teeth? Huh? Huh? I know, right? Katie Price turkey teeth. Yeah? 
they looked like I just spent three weeks in Turkey getting my teeth done. Mark straightened them and whitened them on his Mac. So can I just say, but he didn't make my nose smaller, although I did ask for that. <laughs> so also, yeah, I think there's some other things that have been taken off, like come some of these. I don't know. I don't know if he did that, but he definitely straightened and whitened these because there's no way my gnashes look like that. Yeah. So, oh, it's so it's on the Wirral. Mm hmm. It's I'm coming. I'm coming on the Wirral. Am I coming on the Wirral? No, Wirral, that's the posh side of the river. Liverpool, please. Oh, well, I'm so posh. I'm going to come on the Wirral. Is that that doesn't sound right. I mean, who knows? Might be my lucky night. Um, <laughs> anyway, so let's just agree, you and me, privately here, quietly, that um, I know that I my teeth don't look like this. Mark was just being nice because I asked him to make them look nicer. <laughs> so tonight, I think, is the ever obnoxious uh, comic relief. Can I just say, can I, someone give me permission? Oh. Someone give me permission to be really, really rude about comic relief. Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> if we were actually in a pub, you see, we could all drink to it. Oh, hold on, I have to concentrate because my left hand coordination is terrible. <laughs> this is the thing about having some of your brain removed. Turns out your brain does some pretty useful shit that you don't know it does. So you guys out there, um, say it. Exactly, I'm going to. You have permission, go for it. Thank you. You see, you guys are, the, you guys are a gift. But let me just tell you something your brain does that you don't know it does but that my brain no longer does because I had a bit chopped out. So as you go about your life, your brain, and on this side I still have it, so there's a bookcase just here. Hold on. See? Right. So my right... Oh, golly, have I buggered the thing? Well, it's a little bit wonky-donky like me. My right-hand side knows how far I am from this bookshelf, right? So I know it's not going to... Even without looking, it's not going to be at the end of my hand. All I have to do is reach over a little bit there, bookcase. And without looking, my brain was already scoping where I am versus the bookcase. Right. Your brains are doing that all the time. Right now, as you're watching this, your brain knows roughly how far you are from this or from that, or how far you'd have to reach to touch that. Right. I've got that. On this side of my body, all here, all of that facility is gone. So when they cut this bit out of my head, that peripheral um, ability got taken. So when I'm sitting like this, if I can't see over here, I have no idea what this side of my body is doing. Literally not a clue. I don't know how far I am from anything. I don't have a sense of what's there. It's just as if I was still on the edge of a cliff and there was just a sheer drop. So in order for me to know what my left side's doing, I have to look at it. <laughs> so what this means is when I'm at a table, let's say I'm eating with someone, let's say it's a stranger who I don't really know, but I'm having a lovely time, therefore not thinking about checking my periphery, my left hand and my left leg occasionally just does its own thing. <laughs> and I don't mean like, it doesn't like go and start, you know, it doesn't like go, fuck it, let's dance. <laughs> it's not like that. But like my left leg will be out, it will reach out and it will be touching someone's leg. It could be wandering up to their crotch. My hand can be wandering off and moving someone else's drink. This whole side of me just fucking does what it wants. And I like, I like respect my left hand side because it's like its own, its own thing. It's like, I'm just going to go and reach over there. I'm just going to touch this man's bollocks with my left toes. But I don't know unless I see it doing it. It's just off doing its own shitting thing. It's like having a kid or a badly behaved dog, except it's my left leg and my left foot. And it just fucks off and does what it wants. So whilst I appear quite normal, <laughs> yes, this is forever. I don't have any of this. 
So like even stairs, I had to relearn stairs and stuff. I could not do stairs to start. No, you guys have no idea, unless you're epileptic or you have other things, because we all have something. But like stairs are so hard. The idea that normal people, you guys, go to a set of stairs and you're like, and you just run down them. Like as soon as you lose a bit of your brain, stairs are like, it's like going mountaineering without any gear. You're like, holy shit. <laughs> well, like my son goes downstairs two at a time. I mean, there's just no way because my left foot doesn't know where it is. So anyway, I'm just letting you know. I can't remember why we got onto that. But whatever, whatever, whatever. So here we go. Comic relief. Let's keep drinking. <laughs> oh. Escalators don't even. <gasps> the escalators. So I have to act because obviously... You know, at various times I'm either being filmed or watched or people are like, whatever. So I'm getting on an escalator. I act. So it's literally an act. I go, mm -hmm, I've got, I can do this. I can do this. Do, do, do. Get on. Try not to look like a twat. Stand. Hold the thing. I can do this. I can do this. But inside I'm going, fucking hell. <laughs> Where's your left leg? You're gonna fall. You're gonna fall. <laughs> And the outside is like, yeah, 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 I'm on the, yeah, I'm just totally in John Lewis, I'm fine. <laughs> Don't even, there's a whole other thing. I could tell you lots of things I'm missing. <laughs> but left hand peripheral functionality is one of them. It's a wonder I'm ever on a stage. Right. Yes, comic relief. You said I can say it. So, I think it's a load of old shite. I don't want to see you pretending to have fun in your kitchen, pretending to be, ah, ha, 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 I'm just gonna bake this cake for comic, ah, ha, 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 comic relief, and here I am with my daughter, and it's so simple to make, and I'm just gonna buy the ingredients, and I'm just gonna make it in this kitchen that we're gonna pretend is our kitchen, and here I am <laughs> with my daughter, and we're having so much fun because it's like chocolate cake, and I'm gonna like put some on her face, and <laughs> this is what comic relief is all about, cutie booty me in the kitchen making chocolate cake. Oh, here's some other celebrity twat making chocolate cake for comic relief because they got a job from their agent and they thought they would do it and it's so fun and anyone can make it. Oh, fuck off. Just fuck off. Fuck off with your comic relief. Piss off with your holier than thou. Screw off with your well-paid famous people. <laughs> Give now, donate now. I heard today, donate now. Text £10 to... I am a frigging twat. Ten pounds, just ten pounds, will feed a family of three for a week. What fucking planet is that in the UK? Ten quid, family of three for a week. I mean, maybe if you cook like us, but not if you're producing it through some sort of corporate charity by the time you've paid the wages of the fat bastard sat on top of that charity, lapping up the attention. Just ten pounds will help a, let me get it, a refugee, a refugee have an interview to help with their housing needs and access to employment. Piss off again. Sure, I will go out and give a tenner to some good lad who could do with, I don't know, buying himself enough alcohol to knock out his sorrows because he's sleeping rough. A hundred percent, I will do that. I do not care if the homeless person uses my tenner to buy drugs. If I was on the street, I would do more drugs than I've tried to do in my life, which have largely consisted of morphine and Oxycontin. But I am not giving a man to bloody comic relief. Text it. Text. I'm a complete F-bomb mug. Huh? Oh, look at this funny nose. <laughs> Piss off. Piss off. Go to your local hospice. Go and pour some teas or give some cash to some people at the hospice or... I don't know, do something local. Do not give money to comic relief. Okay, is that bad? How's your experience with epilepsy? I'm going to surgery in a few days. Best thing you could ever do. Do not be afraid of anything. And just before you go in to have surgery, if it's like mine, you're having your whole head cut off, you will feel incredibly, incredibly calm. And the calm I felt in the hours 
before surgery, even though I was dressed like a twat with my arse out and stockings on up to here, the calmness, you will never again achieve the calmness you achieve when you're going to life or death surgery because you are you hand over everything. It's beyond your control. You're going to get a catheter. You're going to get morphine. You're going to have a team of people trying to keep you alive. And if you don't make it, it's so fine because you'll never know. It's joy. I would go for major surgery any time of the day. Perp, do not be afraid. And actually, and some of you know this, the happiest days of my life have been on morphine with a catheter. And actually those up the leg support stockings. Even better, when you're in intensive care, you get a hot bed that blows, literally blows hot air up your vagina. I mean, that isn't the intention. It's a hot air bed because they have to kind of rewarm you because in surgery, it's like minus four. If you're in there like I was for like 20 hours, you basically turn into an ice cube and they have to defrost you. But they just basically blow hot air all over you with a compression stocking, basically up to your nipples, a catheter so you can just piss yourself, morphine and a nice lady nurse person that comes and like makes a nice face at you every now and then and asks you to blink. Bloody lovely. Much better than when they take the catheter out and you've got like drains here, drains here and you're supposed to try and take a piss with a drain coming out your head. <laughs> and I had to get Mark, there's literally, there was just stuff, every, I had to get, and I was over a bowl and I had to get Mark to turn the tap on with a with a <laughs> curtain around me so other people in intensive care didn't have to see me trying to piss. <laughs> I think I may have overshared on the epilepsy front. Did, did someone say they found me sexy earlier? <laughs> don't be afraid, any surgery, don't be afraid. Just make sure there's pain relief. Someone tried to come at me after surgery with two, two paracetamol. I was like, well, you, sorry, could you fuck right off and then fuck off some more? <laughs> bring me gas and air, bring me Oxycontin, bring me morphine. Don't try the paracetamol bullshit. <laughs> Someone also tried to come at me with one of those. And to, if you we've, we've been here before, but if you have a child and they wear an epilepsy helmet, Brilliant. And if you're if you're an adult and you wear one, I, I salute you. Right. So this is nothing. My view, not your view. No piss taking on you. They tried to come at me with an epilepsy padded helmet. <laughs> Again, you can fuck right off. Take your helmet with you. I fuck all the way off. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Right. That was comment relief. We did. I'm going to check our agenda. Uh, we did Jeremy Vine. Oh, the French. Mm, come on. Um, speakeasies. Yeah, so this week I was at a speakeasy. If you were there, I bloody love you. Thank you for coming. We had such the nicest time, didn't we? And we will make it happen again. And the next speakeasy we're going to do at that particular venue, we're going to have a bring your kid to the cafe day. So for the next stand up, I'm getting, because everyone was like, oh, my 18 year old son loves you. Or like, oh, my daughter loves you. And I was like, right, next time we're gonna bring the youth and sit them at the front, especially if they're 18 year old boys and good looking. Not that I'm a pervert, obviously, but like if, if they're sons huh, and they think it would be fun to come, let's get the young people to come and have a laugh at the miserable bastards that are trying to put them down. So thank you for the Speakeasy crew. Um, and please know if you're out there watching this and um, you think you're on your own, it's really important to me that uh, you know you're not. There is a network of speakeasies across this country. You might not see them, you might not hear them. But as in the time of prohibition, the network is building. And I can promise you that because I've been amongst it and I'm talking in it and I'm part of it. And I will keep, keep that network alive until we are called to action. That's a threat. Uh, I want to say a couple of things because we only have five minutes left. Yes, let's drink to that. Exactly. Let's drink to not being alone. You are not alone. Here's to not being alone. Great. Love you too. Yes. You're late. The clock, wait a minute, the clock changed through you. Have we changed the clocks? Did no fucker tell me? How rude. Um, 
Oh, we have so many things. Do I have social friends like Carol Vorderman? No. Mostly because her tits are so massive you wouldn't get near her face, would you? <laughs> Be like that. All right, Carol. All right. <laughs> You'd have to do sign language, wouldn't you? <laughs> How are you doing? OK, do you want a drink? Do you want a cig? Tits would be so, she'd be like the other end of the bar. She sees a massive nipples of Carol Vorderman poking you in the eyes. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind Carol Vorderman's nipples in my eyes. I disagree with her on many things, but I think she's marvellous. Um, so a couple of things are important. Uh, money is going to collapse. I know that. Um, Andrew Bridgen. Mm, 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 mm. Love you, Andrew. I'll text you later. A uh, good man for what you did in the House of Comments. Uh, comments? Also comments. Um, and bless your soul. And um, it takes a big man to stand in an empty room and continue. And your life, when you're trying to be in that place, must be horrific with everybody deliberately acting like you've been shunned. But that is, truthfully, school, isn't it? That was the days of the bullies, where the bullies would leave the table if you sat down or whatever. And that's what you, this, they're supposed to be adults and they're on our payroll. And I, I can tell you, Andrew, if you do by chance get sent this, um, that the people who are with you are many, many more than you know. And certainly many, many more than the idiots that you're surrounded by. So I want to say to Andrew Bridgen on behalf of us, cheers and good on you. Ooh, look, that went a little bit wild with the lip gloss this evening. <laughs> I wasn't really looking when I did it, to be honest. I just slathered it on in the desperate hope it might make my visage more appealing. Yes, sorry. How is Alex? I spoke to him last night. I've had two visits with Alex and they've both been pulled. Uh, so we won't worry about that. Um, but, but please know I'm making every effort to get into that place and see him. I spoke with him on the phone. He's doing surprisingly well. So he's six months in. He got two years, nine months. Well, actually, he got five and a half years. He has to serve two years, nine months for the crime of stalking, but never actually physically coming into contact with anyone and never actually leaving his home address whilst committing the acts of stalking. But just doing some videos on YouTube, five and a half years. But he's still really able to form sentences, He's still able to hold conversation and he's still able to argue and to laugh a bit and to find funny and to talk about things that will happen in the future. And I say that you might say, well, yeah, yes, Katie. But like with Tommy, uh, Tommy lost a lot of that because of being put in isolation, not speaking, not hearing the sound of his own voice, not eating. Whereas Alex is definitely in a better place. He's got a room to himself that he sleeps in at night and he can get to his phone um, and he was engaged with what I'm saying and he's so grateful to you guys for writing. And we were discussing how part of his discipline of his everyday is his letters and he made a deal with himself that he will personally reply to every single one of those. So I will share you um, again his uh, address on my postings and you can, let me just get rid of this person. Uh, there we go, because you know what? Dickheads can offer to piss, because we're better than you. And I will share his address again so you can keep writing in, but truly, I believe your letters are the thing that's keeping him with purpose and making him uh, write back, and then he's sharing them with his parents because he wants them to see that he has support to keep them going as well. So please know that it's having a much bigger effect. Alex is Alex Belfield, the voice of reason. He did a lot of great stuff helping people through lockdowns. He also helped expose things that he saw wrong at the BBC. And because of it, just like me or Tommy or Tate or whomever else, they went for him. They created a new law, just like they did for me, for him that made online stalking, which is making videos, ripping the shit out of the BBC, an offence. And he got the longest sentence in human history. But there wasn't, I mean, this wasn't precedent. He set precedent. OK, um, so the exciting news. I know I've kept it to the last two minutes. So here we go. I don't know why I'm clapping. I look like some person that gets taken out in a minibus and licks windows. <laughs> 
we have got oh, we've got the full armpits there hold on mm -hmm. one of my armpits i always shave this one i shave better than this one because i'm left-handed so to do this one i'm just like uh that'll do you know so maybe i need to work on that just a thought before i show you my armpits again <laughs> But anyway, we have uh, a London venue, <laughs> which is just brilliant. Um, lovely Lee Hurst has given us um, Backyard Comedy Club. And so those tickets are on sale. Um, they're on katiesarms.com, katiesarms.com. And then they'll also be on the Backyard site. So I think it's where the Unleashed, the free speech uh, comedy boys perform. And they and I've asked them because people have asked them to have me on their lineup and they won't. So um, instead, I'm just going to go to the venue they use and do my own show. <laughs> so come to that. There's going to be 300 of us if we sell it out. Uh, we're doing it as cheap as we can, I think. I don't know how much it is, but it's like at a price that I think is 10, 15, I want to say 10, 15. We made it as cheap as we could so that as many people can come as can come and we can all be together and have a laugh. And that's true for other venues we're bringing on. Uh, sitting born, we're bringing on. I always think you say Katie's ass. I got my ass out actually at the speakeasy to show them my deported tattoo. <laughs> So Sitting Born is also coming online and that's going to be, we're going to be able to do that, I think for a tenner maybe. So we're just trying to make prices as low as we can so that um, the venue can take whatever they have to take and we can all, so that we can fill these places so that you can see you're not on your own. Um, so that's what we're doing. So Katie's Arms, A-R-M-S dot com. Uh, if you go on there, there's all the ticket links. Many are sold out, but we but we've just brought London on, um, and I'd love I'd love to fill that place because then we can just keep doing it, and maybe we can let other people uh, do their performances, and you know this this family of ours gets to have a voice. I can't marry you. I think it's Louise. It could be Louis. It could be Louis. It could be Louisa. Whatever. I can't marry you because I've been married twice already. And if, you know, if, if lovely Mark leaves me, I don't, people think I'm, you know, some people think I'm sort of attractive or whatever, but in reality, terrible, terrible. I snore, oh, oh, my breath probably, oh. I don't change my pyjamas often enough. I certainly don't wash my bed sheets often enough. Do you see what I mean? I'm like you, and therefore you definitely don't want to be married to it. I don't wear matching underwear. I, I can't be asked most of the time to be honest. <laughs> so so you know I don't want to I don't want to uh, blow the highly sexy illusion but um all I'm saying is you might be disappointed. <laughs> right. Um I will uh see I I'm taking your time. So I will thank you uh, for being so kind for being so supportive. The Instagram page is growing like crazy the Katie's arms this is growing like crazy we reach a massive audience now and um and tickets are selling like crazy so I don't know what to say really it's all too much for me um other than if you're having an operation or if you've got something hard this week channel your inner Katie and and think balls to the wall you know balls to the wall the worst that can happen is I don't come back well the worst that they can have can happen is People think I'm a twat. Okay, do. Think I'm a twat. Did it affect me? No. Did it make you feel better? Maybe. We're all winners. Okay. Okay, my love. Um, I will see you next week. Or if you're coming to a speakeasy next week, I will see you there. Much love. Okay, bye-bye.